Okay, hi there. Welcome to a special video looking at a synoptic essay question. Uh, this is designed uh, mainly for students studying the Edexcel specification where there was a 25 mark synoptic essay. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about the impact of a higher minimum wage. I've put together a couple of extracts uh, just to help you in terms of uh, maybe if you want to have a go at the question. Uh, the Low Pay Commission is the body charged with recommending the level of the minimum wage. And the estimated there's about 2 million workers paid at or below that level in, in the UK just before the pandemic. It's about one worker in 12, 7%. But nearly half of all jobs in that sector of the economy are in retail, hospitality, cleaning and maintenance. Also gives you some data on the relative size of the minimum wage in the UK relative to other high income countries. And the government announced, the UK government announced back in the autumn of 2021, that from April the 1st, the minimum wage will rise by uh, is it 59p, 6.6% increase, to £9.50. That is quite a sizable jump. And uh, the other rates have going, are going to go up as well, including the apprenticeship rate, uh, increasing to £4.81 and bringing it into line with the, the rate for 16 to 17 year olds. Here's the question we're just going to walk through well, uh, in terms of how to structure an answer. Uh, using the extracts and your own knowledge, assess the micro and macroeconomic impacts of a rise in the minimum wage. Now, the crucial thing for Edexcel students is that it's a five paragraph answer. Uh, you only need one micro impact, one macroeconomic impact. So it's a five paragraph answer. Do your micro one first, then evaluate it. Do the macro one, then evaluate it, and then uh, bring in a final reasoned judgment. So there's the structure of the answer, and the crucial thing is not to overwrite. You only need one micro or one macro point. Don't forget, you've only got about 30 minutes to write this answer. So what about the micro impact? Well, when you're thinking about the microeconomic consequences of the minimum wage going up, whenever you're discussing the effects on individual households, uh, businesses and industries, then you are focusing on microeconomics. So, for example, will the minimum wage increase the real incomes of households, particularly those people in relatively low paid jobs? Will it improve uh, work incentives and lead to more people um, choosing to work longer hours, perhaps moving from part time to full time? That would be something you could talk about. Another consequence could be on the costs of producers, businesses directly affected by the minimum wage drawing on the extract, for example, hospitality and catering businesses. What about the output and profits of, of employers? So you could link costs, output and profit. Uh, there's certainly scope there for a cost and revenue diagram. What about the structure of markets? Uh, the competition uh, in markets may change. If, if smaller businesses, for example, find it hard to cope with a minimum wage, that might increase the market share and the market power of existing large businesses. And if, for example, Amazon or the big industrial catering uh, companies. Uh, if you focus on the labour market in a particular occupation, does it help to reduce relative poverty? That would be a micro aspect. And you could also discuss the extent to which a minimum wage addresses market failure in the labour market, or uh, could it could it actually lead to a risk of government failure? Uh, so are you addressing the market failure from monopsony employers, or are you risking causing unintended consequences, which might be called might be uh, uh, attributed to government failure? Macro effects, probably easier, I think, probably to write about and analyse, because obviously if you're lifting the minimum wage across the whole economy, it is going to have an impact on those key macro variables. So inflationary pressures, will they go up, both demand pull and cost push? What are the possible impacts on the, some of the components of aggregate demand, including consumption, business investment and exports, and then obviously the impact for growth in the economy? Uh, will a minimum wage impact both on short run and possibly long and aggregate supply? And what are the consequences for monetary policy? So will the Bank of England possibly be thinking of raising interest rates if inflationary pressures get too high? What might a minimum wage do to unemployment and employment? Now, if you're talking about employment in a particular industry or the employment levels of a particular business, that is a microeconomic aspect. But if your paragraph is about the possible consequences for unemployment in the UK economy as a whole, then that becomes a macroeconomics point. Some people argue that minimum wage has possible supply side effects on things like labour productivity, labour efficiency and aggregate labour supply. The government might be affected uh, by a higher minimum wage. It's a major employer. The NHS employs more than a million people. 
Uh, low paid council workers, for example, might get a, an increase in their wage, but it also might bring in more tax revenue. But it will certainly have more consequences for government borrowing and debt. And you might want to take a trade perspective. You might want to look at the impact, the possible impact on UK trade, given that the UK has one of the relatively highest minimum wages amongst advanced nations with whom we do a lot of trade. Uh, certainly, if you're going to use a, a diagram, you're probably going to think about labour demand and supply. So let me just work through this with you. You could contextualise this and talk about a particular demand and supply for I don't know, security workers or people working in hospitality. That would be a good idea. Minimum wage, of course, has to be set above the free market wage to have any effect. So, if, And if it does that, other things being the same, we'd expect employment to contract from E1 to E2 and more people to offer themselves for work. So labour supply would expand from E1 to E3. So potentially there is some real wage unemployment created there, an excess supply of labour. Now that's a perfectly fine diagram. It's what most students would draw if they were given a minimum wage question. The minimum wage above the equilibrium wage leading to a disequilibrium in the labour market. My, my, my focus this year is on trying to get students to develop their analysis diagrams. So what we've got there is fine. I would argue you could probably just develop it maybe one stage further. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples here. So you could look at if the labour demand curve is more wage elastic. In other words, LD2 is a much more wage elastic demand curve where employment, number of people the firms are employing, is more sensitive to an increase in minimum wage. In this, in this case, employment falls not from E1 to E2, but from E1 to E3, there's a bigger fall in employment. And you could use that analysis as part of your discussion about whether workers actually benefit from a minimum wage. Yes, some people are getting a higher pay per hour, but there could be uh, quite a hefty contraction in the number of people who actually get, get employed. Uh, the other option is to talk about the impact on productivity. So, for example, some people argue, some economists believe, that paying people more increases their productivity, the marginal revenue product of labour, in which case employers might be more likely to employ people. So that could be the labour demand curve with higher productivity, in which case, instead of employment falling from E1 to E2, employment might actually go up in the minimum wage from A to C, and employment might rise to E4. Again, this is challenging the assumption that the minimum wage automatically reduces the number of people in work. You could also take a macroeconomic perspective and use ADAS analysis. I'll use the neoclassical model for this. Clearly, if the minimum wage goes up, other things being the same, costs of production will rise. Labour costs are a hefty percentage of costs for many businesses. So I've shown here an inward shift of aggregate supply, which in theory reduces real output and causes prices to increase. But of course, you might want to develop the diagram by thinking about the effects on aggregate demand. So if you're giving I don't know, around two million workers a pay rise, about a thousand pounds a year, let's say, that in theory is going to lead to increased consumption, particularly as, if people have a high propensity to spend, in which case aggregate demand will shift out. Uh, again, there's rising inflationary pressure, but real GDP might increase instead of decrease. The key here really is to think about the context in which this happens. So that is a useful uh, aggregate demand and supply analysis approach to take. If you can, obviously it depends on the context, you will get some context for paper three. Try to include some application data and evidence in each of your main paragraphs. Um, draw from the extracts, do that at least twice. And also, of course, use your own knowledge that can count as application as well. A couple of uh, thoughts on some evaluation perspectives. First of all, it's a 6.6% rise in the minimum wage in the UK, 59 pence an hour. That is high. It's the highest jump in the minimum wage for some years. But so in nominal terms, people are better off. But of course, we know that inflation in the UK is rising sharply at the moment. It's currently 6.2 percent. It's forecast to be average 7 percent over the over the course of the of the year. So in real terms, actually, the nominal increase in the minimum wage is essentially wiped out by inflation. Indeed, the minimum wage for some workers uh, might actually go down in real terms. That said, do a quick calculation. If you work uh, 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year, an extra 59p an hour is about a £1,100 increase in your gross income. Um, and that, that gives you more spending power. But um, 
that if you're earning £19,000 a year working full-time on minimum wage, uh, about a third of it will be taxed. Income tax at 20%, national insurance at 13.5%. So you lose about a third in direct taxes. Again, this is a bit of evaluation as well as application to say that the full gains of the minimum wage might be tempered, might be limited, might be constrained by the tax system. Uh, will workers paid just above minimum wage ask for compensating wage increases? So if you were paid £10 an hour beforehand, uh, your wage differential with people now being paid 950 has come down. And so some people may ask for compensating wage increases. The macro context is important in 2022. Of course, we had a deep recession in 2020 due to the pandemic. A lot of businesses are hanging on, st struggling to uh, recover from that. Can they afford to pay a minimum wage? And if they can't, uh, will they look to cut costs elsewhere? So, for example, cutting out non-monetary rewards for workers like free lunches or discounted uh, discounted products and travel? Or will they cut the hours that they offer workers? If they have to pay a higher wage per hour, will they offer fewer hours? And there's kind of a long-term issue, which I put in red here, that the government's using the minimum wage to address relative poverty, uh, in particular, the problem of working poverty. So working poverty is people in work, but still below the poverty line and claiming universal credit. Perhaps there are other ways that we need to address uh, working poverty, not just the minimum wage. For example, reskilling and upskilling workers and getting better paid jobs in the economy. The current strength of the labour market, I think, is also something worth mentioning in evaluation. Unemployment is low, 3.9% of the labour force. We've got a record number of unfilled job vacancies. 1.3 million. So perhaps you, can, you might argue this is the right time to be lifting the minimum wage. You need to encourage more people into work and the economy can sustain it. But some sectors will be badly affected. Uh, retail and hospitality and cleaning. Might this hit younger workers more? Um, you know, workers aged 23, 24, 25, or perhaps hit workers from disadvantaged communities. Of course, the impact of lifting the minimum wage by 6% depends in part on other factors. What happens to labour productivity, for example, will determine what happens to unit wage costs. Uh, it depends on the wage elasticity of demand for labour, the extent to which firms uh, decide to cut back on employment. And it also depends on the, product, the profitability of businesses. Can they afford to pay a higher minimum wage, especially when the government's just been increasing national insurance? Could a higher minimum wage in the UK lead to more informal employment, in which case the cost of enforcement might rise? Now, the final paragraph is something that's up to you to develop. I'd avoid just making the same points again. So try to say something a little fresh. Do you think the micro effects are bigger than the macro effects or vice versa and why? Uh, maybe consider differential impacts across regions and industries. Uh, challenge the assumptions behind your analysis. Are all firms profit maximizers? Uh, or all, uh, you know, will will workers necessarily spend an increase in minimum wage? What about savings behavior, etc.? I think the change in the minimum wage should not be seen in isolation. Okay, so the focus is on the minimum wage going up, but keep in mind lots of other moving parts in the economy: tax and welfare changes. Uh, the labour shortages post-pandemic could be could be usefully discussed and the bargaining power of workers is uh, something to be aware of. So there's lots to cover here. I think the secret in the 25 marker, you've only got 30 minutes maximum. Keep it simple, keep it structured. One micro effect, evaluate it. One macro effect, then evaluate it. And then a final reason judgment at the end. Use the extracts, use your own knowledge, Use at least one developed diagram and I think you'll be in great shape for the exam. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay happy, stay curious and see you again sometime soon.